sometimes you just gotta, you know, shake it out. What's up YouTube? Welcome to Pulse Review, the channel where you get a quick take on the hottest products. And today, we're gonna be doing a review of the Logitech G915 TKL White. And that's what I got right here. There you go, for those of you in the back. Oh, so excited. So in today's video, here's what we're going to cover. First up, we have what is in the box. We're gonna do a quick unboxing segment, get through that. Next up, we're gonna chat about the aesthetic appeal, the customizability options you have with this keyboard, the special features they built in, the battery life, the switches. Uh, this one, I went with the tactile switches. There's three options with this keyboard. And then I'm going to wrap it all up with my final thoughts on this keyboard, kind of give you a summary of how I feel about it and whether or not you guys should pick this one up. All right, time to get this sucker out of the box. So when it comes to gaming peripherals, I think the whole industry has become well aware that us gamers not only want our gear to function well, but we also want it to look amazing while doing it. And I personally think that Logitech has really hit the bullseye with this keyboard. I feel like the more I review Logitech peripherals, the more I just fall in love with the brand's aesthetic. Look at this keyboard. Just look at it. This sleek aluminum finish, the white keys contrasting with that perfectly, add in the RGB and you just have a amazingly beautiful keyboard. On top of that, it's got this very sleek thin profile. If you check it out right there, super thin. Like my current keyboard is at least twice this width. I, I don't know how they do it. I gotta say, this is hands down the most attractive keyboard I've ever seen. If you watch any of my other videos, you know I love RGB, and this has a ton of different RGB settings, which is actually a great segue into the customizability of this keyboard. You turn on your PC, you plug that USB receiver in, fire up Logitech G Hub, and you're hit with more RGB options than you're gonna know what to do with. Of course, you can program the function keys to do whatever your heart desires, which is kind of nice. I think I prefer that over preset key binds. And I would be remiss if I did not talk about all the RGB options that are involved in this keyboard. Right out of the box, you have a ton of RGB presets that you can play with. My personal favorite is the ripple effect and it kind of just does exactly how it sounds. You press a key and then the RGB lights ripple outward from that. Doesn't matter what key you press, the RGB lights are gonna ripple out from there. If that's not your thing, then don't worry, there's probably over a dozen more preset options and then you can make your own as well. So other than the RGB customizability options, you also have a game mode button and you can toggle that on and off either through the G-Hub app or directly on the keyboard with a dedicated button they have here. It's got an icon that kind of looks like a joystick on top. Anyways, what it does is you toggle that game mode on and you can tell the G-Hub app, okay, disable these keys. So say you're in the middle of a sweaty gunfight, your finger slips, you hit the Windows key, your whole menu pops up, you die, pain, just not a good story. You enable game mode, that never happens. 
this keyboard actually packed a ton of special features. So let's dive in. First off, look at all these buttons that are on top just above the function keys. You got some on the left, you got some on the right, a bunch of dedicated buttons that make controlling your gaming experience that much more convenient. So on the left side, you can choose from the light speed wireless or Bluetooth modes. So that means the light speed wireless is gonna give you the highest response rate, or I should say lowest actually, the fastest response rate at one millisecond. You switch over to Bluetooth, it's a bit slower, but you could also have this connected to two devices at once with the USB receiver in one computer and Bluetooth in another. That is kind of a handy feature. Moving on, we have the game mode. I already told you guys about that. There's a dedicated key for that. And then the last one on the left side is this brightness button. To be honest with you guys, I haven't been able to get this one to work, but maybe you will. On the right side, we have the standard multimedia buttons, you know, rewind, play, fast forward, mute. And then they included the amazing volume up or volume down, dedicated dial, very smooth, just absolutely love how this thing feels. It's not clicky, it just kind of rolls like a smooth scroll wheel. One more thing I have to mention about the special features is on the back side of this keyboard. You have, obviously, you know, most keyboards are gonna have feet like this, right? They flip up, you set it down, so you got essentially two heights, one with the feet up, one with them down. Well, Logitech took it a step further and you can actually only put up the small feet instead and have it sit just a little bit lower. Really nice, you get three different levels of options there when it comes to the height at which you want your keyboard. I found this to be really nice and I have never seen a keyboard incorporate that kind of a feature. So hats off to Logitech. Okay, time to talk about the battery life. So you're going to get on a full charge 106 hours out of this keyboard. It's pretty solid. A friend of mine who has had this keyboard for a while says it lasts him about two weeks on a full charge and he's working eight hours a day, sometimes spending even longer on his computer. So that is good to know. Also, it's important to note that your RGB settings are going to be a huge factor in how much battery life you can squeeze out of this thing. If you have it on a more lower power consumption setting like the ripple mode I mentioned earlier, it's really not gonna drain the battery too much only when you press a key. And then there's also a nice feature that automatically turns on. If your battery hits 15%, it starts to, I think, pulsate red or it'll glow red somewhere. So that's a nice indicator for you. It's time to charge. One more feature I have to mention is the inactivity lighting settings you can configure in the G Hub app. By default, after one minute of inactivity on your keyboard, it will dim the lights to 50%. And then after five minutes, it will completely shut them off. And as I mentioned, those time frames are fully customizable. If you wanna get down and dirty with how much power consumption your keyboard is using, then you can actually go into the G Hub app and hit the settings tab. It's gonna show you right there how much your battery life has left, how many hours that battery life is gonna give you, and then it even gives you the power consumption. So right now, I just have the keyboard on, it's on the ripple setting, so no RGB is really on, and that is putting out one milliamp for the system and 12 milliamps for the lighting. I think your average consumer probably doesn't really care too much about those things, but it's a nice to have. So the last thing we gotta talk about is one of the most important things in a keyboard and that is the switches. What I love about this keyboard is you get the luxury of being able to decide what kind of switches you want right off the bat before they even ship it to you. You get three different options. They call their first option clicky. It's audible click and tactile feedback. Then you have tactile, a gentle bump for tactile feel and then GL Linear, which is a completely smooth keystroke. I ended up going with the tactile keystrokes, or switches, I should say, which is kind of the middle of the road option. They're a little bit spongier. I have to say, I am used to a mechanical keyboard with switches that are very, you know, tactile, super responsive, not mushy whatsoever. And uh, it's, 
I would say if I was gonna redo it and buy it again, I would probably get the clicky ones, but it kind of comes down to personal preference. If you're working in close proximity to others at an office and you're gonna be using this keyboard and you get the clicky keys, then you know your office mates might hate you because you're just gonna be clicking all over the place, making all kinds of noise. Or if you have a baby sleeping in the other room, whatever reason you have, if you're trying to be quiet and keep a low profile, don't get the clicky keys. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a nice sound test right now for how the tactile sounds. To give you guys a little context on how this keyboard sounds compared to other ones, I brought out a couple extra keyboards so we can test it against those. So first up, we have the Logitech G915. Let me point the microphone down a little bit. Then we have a Razer Black Widow Ultimate, mechanical keyboard, very loud switches. Next up is a old Mac keyboard I had laying around, very quiet switches. So there you have it, one more time. Coming in at $229 US, that's a pretty pricey keyboard. And with that price point comes some high expectations. The only keyboard that's more expensive in the Logitech lineup is the G915 that has the numpad with it. Essentially, it's just a bigger version of this keyboard. Even though the price point is high and therefore my expectations were as well, this keyboard absolutely blew my mind. Logitech has seriously outdone themselves from how it looks to how it functions. I really can't say enough good things about this baby. I actually just did a video review of the Razer Huntsman Elite keyboard. And I have to be honest with you guys, this keyboard blows it out of the water. For around a similar price point, maybe a little bit higher, you get all the same goodies in this keyboard and then some. You have all the same multimedia buttons and then some. You have the nice feet on the bottom that are customizable to different heights. And then on top of that, you get Logitech's Lightspeed Wireless Tech, giving you one millisecond response time. You really can't beat that. So all that to say, don't skip this keyboard. If you're looking for a high-end premium keyboard, I would say go with this one all the way. You're going to love it. If you do think you're gonna pick this keyboard up, I left a link below in the description for you to click and purchase for your convenience. If you do do that, uh, my channel gets a small cut that is an affiliate link. It's a great way to support my channel without it costing you any money at all. So I appreciate it so much if you do so. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found value. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Do it! And subscribe if you wanna see more type of content like this. These days with the YouTube algorithm, why not take back control of what it serves you and subscribe to my channel for amazing content? Like, it's kind of a no-brainer. Do it! Basically a win-win. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video, but don't skip the bloopers. All right, peace out. Welcome to Pulse Review, the place where you get a quick take on the hottest products. And we're gonna redo that because we're not a place we're a YouTube channel. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Pulse Review, the place where you get, it's not a place. It's not a place. I mean, it is, metaphorically speaking, you know, but it's really not a physical location. You know, just the studio in my bedroom kind of is Pulse Review, but you know, the YouTube channel, it just takes up like some data on a server somewhere. So, <sighs> okay, it's a channel, it's a channel can't do these videos without unsweetened sparkling water. Another cool SETI, it, SETI? Another cool setting to mention, another cool option, Logitech, another cool option, let's just, let's just chill.
how much power your computer's keyboard is consuming. Whew, that's hard to say. Keyboard is consuming. Another cool feature that Logitech's give. Why are words so hard? Peace out. Boom, bitch.